Hey friends, it's Rob. It's a Friday afternoon and I hope you all are doing well. I want to thank you for uh, a really excellent first uh, class. I, I really enjoyed it and as anticipated I learned quite a lot from you and I know you uh, gain valuable insights from each other. So that's exactly the point and that's exactly what we're going to be doing for the next five weeks. Hopefully is setting the stage for that kind of shared reflection, sharing of insights, that sort of thing. A uh, couple of housekeeping things. Uh, some of you have reached out uh, with uh, some tech issues around getting into Populi. Uh, hopefully, you've I've been able to connect you with IT and the uh, links are resolved. If for some reason they're not, don't hesitate to keep um, don't hesitate to keep bugging me. I'll keep bugging them, and we will get it fixed. That is a that is totally fine. So please um, please just keep reaching out and. Uh, letting me know about that because I'm really committed to uh, making sure that you all can access everything that you want to access in the course. So uh, don't don't let that one drop. Uh, keep uh, We'll keep working at it until we uh, are able to resolve any issues on that front. In the meantime, though, again, Populi is totally optional. There's a uh, there's already some good discussion happening. Thank you uh, for those that have hopped on to the uh, discussion board there. But uh, everything that's essential for our Wednesday night meetings, including this lecture, uh, readings, that sort of thing, I will put in these weekly emails. Want to uh, give you a couple of comments uh, in advance, particularly if you're reading the uh, Catherine Tanner article of. Um, why I've chosen her work. Uh, she was one of my teachers. I think her theology, uh, when it comes to what she calls finance capitalism, uh, it's one of the main uh, theoretical backdrops to my thinking about this course. In other words, she's a big influence on me uh, as I've thought about this. And a lot of my language that you've heard quite a lot already in terms of how we are formed under capitalism and how Christian theology might operate as a kind of counterformation or um, again it's not it's not as it's not a simple binary the point is not to say capitalism bad Christianity good a we all know that Christianity <laughs> and multiple times throughout history has um, not necessarily lived up to its own standards in terms of being a force for good, A. B, um, th my, my thinking and the assumptions of this class are not somehow that capitalism is inherently evil. W in fact, one of the things I really like about Tanner is that I think um, she is very precise with her terminology. She's certainly that way, she's certainly that way as a theologian. Uh, a number of economists have reviewed um, some of the books that are referenced in the interview, like uh, Christianity and the New Spirit of Capitalism, and they they may not always agree with her conclusions, but uh, a number of economists have said, wow, this uh, Yale theologian is pretty good at reading economic theory. Um, and again, from having studied with her, I can attest, even though I'm certainly no economist, the way Sam and, and others in the class have economics expertise, uh, certainly she is not a dilettante when it comes to reading uh, in other disciplines. She's quite uh, disciplined <laughs> about uh, making sure that she's uh, really diving deeply into areas beyond theology when she is trying to bring theology to bear upon them. Okay, so that's why I like Tanner at a methodological level. Uh, Substance-wise, I think... Um, a thing to notice is that she's really zeroing in not on capitalism as an idea, not on capitalism as an abstract philosophy, nor capitalism as a specific economic arrangement absent from our own particular mo moment. Rather, she wants to talk about capitalism in the here and now, how it operates, this particular mode of capitalism that dominates particularly the United States and what we call the developed world, and then increasingly our global, globalized world. Tanner refers to this as finance capitalism. And what she means by that is a system in which the vast majority of money that is made is made not by the production and exchange of goods and labor, 
as we might think of sort of in classical economics, but rather most wealth, most money is generated by other money, by financial products, by financial markets. And the performance of those financial markets uh, dictates certainly our global geopolitics and impacts them in a major way. It also though, and I, I think this is where she gets particularly interesting, it also dictates sort of how we op operate, <laughs> I'm tempted to say how we live and move and have our being in the world. And it, it relates to our jobs. It relates to how we think about time. It relates to how we think about security. Um, and, you know, in the article, she'll say some really sort of intriguing things. She unpacks them in her book, if you want to read it. But um, she says some really intriguing thing, for instance, about how capitalism, contemporary finance capitalism, for those of us living under it, it sort of collapses a sense of time. The past is not the past monetarily because so many of us are in debt, either personal debt that we have or we are in debt structures. Um, in you know, our our country has a significant national debt. A debt makes the past continually present and also binds the future. And then in terms of the future, uh, the precarity built into capitalism that is, as Tanner will say throughout her work, a re really a feature and not a bug not only of the system itself, but what it means to be a productive citizen under it. Um, it, it is something that truly binds us in such a way that um, accessing the past, moving beyond the past, and being able to think with hope about a future becomes collapsed. So that's just one instance of how her analysis of the particular mechanisms of capitalism in the here and now uh, might might relate to our sense of hope as Christians and, uh, and as people. So I think, again, I appreciate the precision with which she says it's not about capitalism in the abstract. It's not about capitalism on paper. It's about the particular mechanisms of finance capitalism. As we talked about in class, money itself is a, and a number of uh, theologians, uh, Devin Singh, Philip Goodchild, and others have written very compellingly on this. Money itself is a very strange interplay between the virtual and the real, right? Because as we talked about, on the one hand, money itself, and from the get-go, currency has been a kind of flattening, universalizing uh, that's what that's what it's for, right? It it removes the uncertainty of barter economies. It allows for international trade, in which um, all of a sudden there is an agreed upon standard, a medium of exchange. But um, so in that sense, it is um, it's predicated upon a kind of always future abstract debt. And what I mean by that is that if you, even if you um, even if you look at a dollar bill, you realize that it itself is a debt note, predicated upon the full faith and credit, and in our case, the full faith and credit of the U.S. government. Um, there's not a concrete there to money, even more so due to the fact that our currency in the United States is no longer tied to the gold standard, uh, which was as those of you that know your economic history know, was a crucial development in what we have come to call neoliberalism, neoliberal capitalism. And two, it, particularly in a digital age, in a virtual age, as we talked about uh, last in our last class, trillions upon trillions of dollars circulate as purely digital currency without ever being tied to specific goods or services or um, concrete exchanges. So there's a virtue of, of an artificiality, a kind of virtual reality to money, even as we know that <laughs> this exchange of money, these financial instruments have incredibly significant, sometimes quite helpful, sometimes quite devastating real world impacts. In other words, it may be money may not be real, but it has real consequences. And that I think that that status of money as this um, interchange between the real and the virtual 
is of real theological significance, especially when we think, what does it mean, as we began last class, what does it mean to be in the real world? And what does it mean, particularly as, um, for those of us who are Christians, who are committed to the reality of the kingdom of God, the reality of God's call upon us, how do we navigate that in this world where money, finance capitalism, is over-determining not only our our economic systems, our political systems, but also our lives, our sense of vocation. You'll also see in the interview, she talks about um, an anti-work ethic, <laughs> which, uh, you know, someone who was raised Midwest Protestant, that strikes terror in my heart, right? <laughs> Maybe it does yours too. But, um, you know, there's a reason I began last class. I, I almost, when I was thinking, oh, we should all introduce each other, um, I almost fell into that common pattern of asking, you know, uh, who are you, where are you from, and what do you do? In other words, what's your job? What's your paid employment? But I, but I caught myself, I'm not trying to brag, I'm just saying this was my thought process. I caught myself because I'm like, no, we're going to be reading thinkers like Tanner that want to, that certainly value work. I mean, she's a full professor at Yale University. Clearly she has a work ethic <laughs> about her career. However, she also wants to say our vocation, that which we're called to be um, deeply invested in, find meaning is, it, it may be the stuff we get paid for, but it may also be a, um, a broader sense of living out our true and one vocation as children of God, creatures of God in the world to, um, I believe, make the world a more beautiful, just, and loving place in a thousand ways, big and small. Um, I, uh, I try not to, I saw, some of you may have seen this Pixar movie, Soul, um, and spoiler alert, if you haven't seen it and you want to see it, but, um, you know, I try not to quote cartoon movies too often, but Pixar can get pretty deep, right? And one of the points of the movie Soul is that you should never conflate the what they call the spark of life, the meaning of life, with purpose. In other words, a mistake made uh, by characters in the movie is they, they lament that because they feel they have no purpose in life, therefore they have no spark. They almost have no reason for being. And the logic of heaven in that movie is actually to uh, make a strong distinction. One that I think is um, very much in line with the parables of Jesus between the work by which we feed ourselves and our purpose. So this notion of an anti-work ethic that, sh that she'll bring up in the interview is um, I think very much in line with that spirit. It's not that our work can't be our vocation, but we should never um, completely collapse the two. I hope you enjoy the interview. We'll be thinking more about um, we'll be thinking more about capitalism. We talked some about Christian formation and we'll continue to do that in the last period. I want to I want to think a little bit about how how we find life now, uh, particularly as it relates to the impact of capitalism upon our experience, uh, our experience and then um, our sense of the experience of others who, um, well, um, others who, let's face it, don't necessarily have the, the resources and the means and the leisure to be able to do what we're privileged to do, which is to um, come together and think about these things. Um, for those that are very, very, very on the edge, very, very, very um, precarious within our world, how do we think about their situation under these same realities? That will be the work of this coming Wednesday. I'll, I'll really be looking forward to it. Uh, have a good weekend. Happy reading in the meantime. And we'll see you Wednesday at 6 o'clock p.m. Eastern. Same Zoom link. And uh, feel free to reach out to me with any questions in the meantime. Take care.